Hey, welcome to Real Life. And today the program is going to be a little bit different, and yet I think you're going to love it uh, because it's going to really bring uh, kind of us all together uh, at, at a table, so to speak. So uh, we're going to be taking on the topic of sex and sexuality. We're going to be discussing that. And then if you stay tuned and hang on, uh, we're going to be diving into some real live, real time uh, questions and answers. So I hope you enjoy this. Uh, stay tuned and let's get into the word together. Okay, so listen, before we get into the questions and Lord willing, uh, godly answers, I want to remind you about something because this is such an area of, of potential defeat in people's lives, almost a sense of overwhelming loss because you've given yourself to somebody in whatever scenario and it's not worked out. Can God heal the life that I'm in, involved in? Can God heal me? So I wanna just safely, directly give you some scriptures. Make sure you commit them to uh, writing them down and looking at them closely. Exodus 15, 26. If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep his statutes, I will put none of these diseases on you, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals you. He can heal our past. Psalm 107 verse 20. Love this one. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. Isn't that a great promise? Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. God says, come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. This is our redemptive, forgiving God. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. What a great promise that is. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What a promise. And then finally, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. A great favorite, probably of yours. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. God's desire is to restore you and I. He is the redeeming God. It's what he does. You might think today that your life is unredeemable. Well, listen, you're the perfect candidate for God to display his glory in. Listen, there's not some sin, there's not any kind of transgression that is greater than his ability and the power of his blood to wash us clean from. If my spouse is not saved, how do I set boundaries in sex that I'm not comfortable with? You absolutely need to set boundaries in your life. It's your body, and you being the believer, your body belongs to God. You say, yeah, easy for you to say, but this person makes demands of me. You need to tell that person that you, that you assume that they, that they love you. And you need to, by the way, you need to be honest with them. You need to tell them what's bothering you. Please be open and please be honest. You're sharing your body with your spouse. Surely you can speak to them. Let's start right there, okay? It's your body and you're the believer and you need to speak to your unbelieving spouse and tell them, this really bothers my, my conscience. This really bothers me. 
whatever that thing or whatever those things are. Share with them, talk with them, sit down with them. And listen, come to an area of compromise with them, discuss things with them. It's not like you're bartering to make out a deal to close out the sale of something or you know, to, to reach the monthly quota. No, tell them, you know what? It, I, I'm not happy about this. But what, what else can I offer you in light of? Discuss and talk, people. Engage them. Guess what? It's possible. Your unbelieving spouse might be so touched by that. It could be part of the ministry that God has put upon you to eventually lead them to faith in the Lord. But remember, believer, your body belongs to the Lord now. And if an unbeliever or if a... Well, watch my fingers. If a believer wants you to do things that are a violation of your conscience and God's uh, design. Uh, you need to hold your ground and say, listen, that, I draw the line at this. And if the person loves you, they're going to concede. Okay? And um, anyway, yes, okay. Next question. If a man continually watches pornography and will not stop even after his wife objects, is this grounds for divorce? You know, I'm going to give you my answer, but you can go to some other church and get a different answer. If you don't like the answer I give you, just go find somebody else to give you an answer. No, 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 it happens every day. It happens every day. First of all, people go to ministries until they find the answer they want. You need to know that. So, you already know that pornography is a Greek word, pornea, sexual immorality. Do I believe that por pornography is a grounds for divorce? Well, answer number one. Jesus said if a person looks at a woman and lusts after her in his heart, he's committed adultery. And that goes both ways. So it's highly possible. First of all, all men have committed adultery. All men. Because they've had that thought. Now, to be nice to women, I don't, because I'm not one, I can't know, maybe 95% of women are also guilty. Could be 100%. Don't know. <laughs> Just saying. According to God, that man is guilty of adultery and needs to repent. Watch me now. Needs to repent of what? Repent of his pornographic addiction. By the way, he's made it an addiction. It's, it's not a drug that he induces. He's addicted because he inflicted himself to the point where now he's addicted to that stimuli, to that stimulus. Okay, he's hooked on sexual immorality. Personally, if a woman came and said, Pastor Jack, do I have grounds for divorce? This woman says he watches it continually. I believe, he, I believe she has grounds for divorce. But then somebody's going to come back. Another pastor is going to say, did he commit the physical act? Physical act of what? How far did he go? Listen, I'm not being funny. In, in this kind of logic, it's called, it's called being Clintonian. Clintonian. Have you ever heard that term before? It happened after President Clinton had his affair with Monica Lewinsky. No, children, kids began to say, we didn't have sex, we just had oral sex. That was a Clintonian. Remember, because he said, I did, no, no, I'm not joking. He said, I did not have sex with that woman. And so what young people picked up on and began to practice was, we're not having sex, we just have oral sex. It's a Clintonian position to take. Personally, I would say this. Does the woman, does the wife uh, sense violation and abuse and, give me another word. What? Did you say neglect? Wow, I never would have thought of that word. Brilliant. Neglect. All of these things. Does she, feel, does she feel that? Based on his, his mind and his heart, is, he's with other women. I believe she has the grounds. Now, now you, go somewhere else and ask a pastor. You'll get a different answer. 
But let me tell you, if I was viewing porn, I believe Lisa has the grounds to divorce me. That's how I understand the Bible. Next question. My whole life I was told sex is bad. I now know that God created sex as something good between a husband and a wife. But I cannot seem to get past the idea that sex is taboo. How do I change my opinions, emotions about sex? I told you last week, if you didn't get it, uh, if you didn't hear it, mark it down now. Get the book, Sheet Music, by Dr. Kevin Lehman. Okay? He's going to walk you through the biblical uh, design of sex. He's going to talk you through sex and sexuality. He's going to talk you through uh, from a Christian perspective. That, that book will answer you way better than I can in, the, in a few moments. Just know this. God wants you healed in this area powerfully. There was a hand up right here. Yes. Is that the name of the book again? Uh, S-H-E-E-T. Sheet. Like pillows. Pillows and sheets. Sheet music by Dr. Kevin Lehman. I think it's, the, I think it's just that, that book and the Song of Solomon is fantastic. Uh, wow, didn't, didn't Tommy Nelson do a video series called The Song of Solomon? Yeah. That might be kind of fun also. But please remember, yeah, yeah, look, the, God designed sex, and it's perfectly beautiful and awesome, and it's exciting, it's encouraging, it's comforting, it's fulfilling, it's, it, it, it's in fact, more than ever in our crazy world, beautiful, healthy sex between a husband and a wife, uh, should be celebrated and protected because it's such a powerful, beautiful thing. That's why the world has tried to destroy it so much. It always has. Satan doesn't want it healthy. He wants to destroy it. But boy, more than ever right now, it's just... Satan's working overtime to destroy, to try to keep from you that blessing. Next question, anybody? How can sex in the marriage be redeemed after infidelity, either pornography or adultery? It has caused a loss in self-esteem for me as a wife. Yeah, that's almost identical to last week's question. Uh, trust has got to be reestablished. When infidelity takes place, the sex will, with husband and wife will not be so good until trust is reestablished, period. I'm tell, sorry to upset you, that's the way it is. When, when the woman feels safe, and she can trust her husband, then she's willing to give. Are you listening? Nobody's listening? Yes. She's, she can give herself as a maintenance program. She can service her husband like he has a warranty. Are you with me? She can do her wifey or, you know what I'm saying, duty. Who wants that? Some men, some men tragically, maybe they've never experienced love. To them, that's fine. That's their thing. It's, it's, it's just that. Versus, and that's sad because they don't even know their wife. Versus, if she knows she can trust him, if she knows that he loves her, if she knows that his eyes are for her, and man, let me tell you, she blossoms on the inside. Her heart and her emotions and her mind is in the relationship. Dude, if that's not happened in your life, you don't even know who your wife is yet. I'm telling you right now. If your wife cannot trust you, you don't even know her because she's not given herself to you yet. She can't because she doesn't emotionally feel safe. And so that's what's got to happen is trust has got to be created. And this couple, whoever... Whatever couple this text represents, you need to get biblical counseling, biblical guidance, especially with ministers that are pretty good in this area. And there's a, you don't have to, you know, there's a lot of online guys that you can see now that are nationally or international uh, men and women, uh, biblical guidance counselors. I want to commend all of you. Now, I got to be very, very careful. Maybe I shouldn't because this is going out a lot of places. I'm not going to say. Uh, there's, no, no, I can't because I don't agree with some of the theology, theology that's, that the path is going down, but they have tremendous marriage advice. Uh, this gentleman who's, who's pretty, pretty global in what he, he does particularly 
but let's just wait and see how they go the- theologically. But their marriage stuff is great. Question. Right here. And now we'll go to the wall soon. What are some of the things that that man should do to earn his Great question. He just asked, what are some of the things that that man should do to get his wife's trust back? He needs to go to her and say, I, here's the keys to my computer. Here's the logins to my account. And I want, you to, I want you to put my phone. What is that thing on your phone when your spouse, you can, you can share locations with your spouse? By the way, every, every married couple should, be, should have their spouse. They should, be, they should be able to find each other for all kinds of reasons. For all kinds of reasons. This world's nuts, man. Somebody could get killed. Somebody could get kidnapped. Somebody could what? I don't know what. Nothing. Crazy. My wife knows everything. Listen, your wife, your husband should know everything about you, should have the keys to your uh, phone. I'm not, look, you call me a dinosaur, go ahead. Here's the deal. I don't believe in separate worlds when you're married. Amen. Period. Yeah. Well, it's my money. It ain't your money. Tell that to a judge if you're going through a divorce. It's my money. It ain't your money. Well, it's my vacation time. She doesn't want to go. She wants to go to the Bahamas and I want to go to Bermuda. Compromise on a palm tree and meet somewhere. None of this separate world stuff. It's, it, you're, you're flirting with disaster. And when you have a, mom, that's my phone. Don't look at my phone. You'll never trust somebody. It'll breed a disaster if there's separation. Not good. So trust has got to be reestablished. No secrets. No secrets. And so he, he, he needs to reach out to her and say, sweetie, here's everything. Here's my location. Here's my, there's no secrets. There's no nothing. Boom. Okay. Next, uh, so on the wall, my girlfriend and I are strong Christians and truly believe we should stay pure until marriage. I'm going to answer that. We want to know how far is too far when dating. I would love to talk to only the guys right now. We want to stay true to what God wants for our relationship and respect each other, but, I, but still want to have fun with each other. So what do, we, so what do you think? Uh, you know what? That's awesome. You know what? Whoever wrote that, whoever wrote that, you know why? Because that's real and that's awesome. Okay? They, they love each other. They're crazy about each other. They're like this. Good for you. That's great. Remember, Solomon warns us, we talked about it before, don't don't let love get going until you can satisfy it. Hang on to your horses. Okay? So, practically, here's the deal. Now, guys, women, just go somewhere. (laughs) Guys, listen up. Are there any guys in here? Raise your hands. Wait. Guys, raise your hands. There you are. Now watch this, guys. Watch this. Women, raise your hands. You see that? Just one time, and they, do, they, they lift the hand. Okay, so guys, listen. Um, about every 10 minutes, we think about something other than sex. We're different, guys. We're wired different. We talked about this in earlier weeks, previous weeks. We're different. For us to think about, think about kissing her, just a kiss. This sweet text comes from, um, maybe it's a girl, the girl who wrote it. How far can we go? (laughs) Kiss, kiss on the neck, little, little nibble on the ear. Listen, young lady, you can't even walk in the room. Your guy is gone. If you knew, you might think, well, he's just a, he, he's just, you know what? He's a lovable guy. I don't, know, I don't know how sharp he is, but he's sure sweet. Hey, wait a minute. That guy, he loves you so much for him to control himself. He's strong. 
He's strong. He's controlling himself. Listen, guy, honor her. She belongs, listen, she, I read it this morning in my daily, my, my personal Bible reading. I read it this morning that David's daughter, uh, Tamar, remember she had the king's colorful clothing on? All the king's daughters wore, King David's daughters, all the women wore colorful clothing to separate them from the, of all the other women of Israel so all the men would know that's the king's daughter. You don't mess with the king's daughter. Okay? And then remember, Amnon raped her. And he got his in the end. That's awesome, right? He got killed for that, which is sweet. It really is. You rape a woman and you die, according to God. You rape a woman, God says you die. It's the ultimate theft. And so she was, she was violated terribly. And what, what men, what God calls a man to do is to be the strong one, to protect the woman from going too far. Did you know that? You never haven't heard that before, have you? The Christian man is to be the one that says, honey, listen, we can kiss, but this, that's too far. We cannot go there. That's what a man's supposed to do. That's what a man who loves you is supposed to do. Versus a man who says, baby, I need you. I can't watch this. Ladies, listen up. Girls, this now just for you. Guys, butt out. Here's the deal. When some guy says, you know what, honey, I can't live without you. I got to have you. If I, if I don't have you, I'm, I'm, uh, I just can't live without you. You need to run from that guy. Seriously, dump him like a hot potato. You want to know why? He's actually saying this. You, you are the only one that can make me happy and you will make me happy. I have to have you, you must please me. That's what he's saying. You don't need that. You don't need that kind of an immaturity. So, young man, I'm assuming young man, I'm just saying, young man, be strong in the Lord and abstain and flee from all appearances of evil. If you pick her up on a date and she looks too much, you need to say, look, Baby, go back in the house and put on something. That's not going to help tonight. You look too amazing. Okay? You need, to, you need to do that for her. You need to do that for her. I'm dead serious. Talk. Speak about it. Because here's the deal. Everything that we've been getting in the mail about all these lives being messed up, destroyed, and sideways, and good people now who can't have a beautiful sexual relationship with their spouse because of their past, all comes down to, listen up, <laughs> all comes down to how smart God is to have told us that abstinence is the best way to go. All of these things that we're reading in people's lives who are destroyed, if you, listen, you ask them, many of them say, I wish I never would have crossed that line. Abstinence, self-control until you're married. The draw, I, it's not legal for us to let you read that mail. It's illegal for you to read that kind of mail. There's confidentiality. But let me tell you, these people, if they could start all over again, they would. And somebody will go, abstinence, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. You know what? Go ahead and do it your way. And then let's talk in 10 years. Your life will be messed up. You're going to bring, listen, all that sexual experience that you have with strangers or somebody, and you're going to bring in someday to a marriage. It will not go away. It has to be destroyed by God. God has to destroy the memories. God has to destroy the imprint. You bring other people in, and the memory, you bring it in, it, you're going to have struggles. And anyone who's crossed that line before marriage has struggles. It's a fact. It's true. And I'm being your dad right now, I'm telling you. Well, listen, obviously, uh, sex and sexuality is such an important topic. In fact, during the series of teachings that I did on sex and sexuality, we had the biggest response from our viewing audience. And that was not only in, uh, domestically in the US, but, but around the world. This is the issue. Satan has taken sex and has destroyed it, especially in the life of the believer. And so it doesn't have to be that way. God heals us. And so more than 
any other time uh, in the history of the church, it's, it's now time for you to get your life right with God. You are not broken beyond repair. You are not crushed beyond some ability for God to put you upright and to live again. This is what he wants to do in your life. And so please, I'm, I'm pleading with you to give God a chance. Give the love of God a chance. Cry out to Jesus and ask him to renew your life. And I'll leave you with this thought. Many people today are, are battling with the fact that they went into their marriage or whatever situation, maybe they're not even married yet, but now they're lovers of God, but they're not virgins. And they're, they're guilted by that. Let me tell you right now, the God of the Bible is the only God that exists that can allow you today by you deciding to follow him where he can make you a virgin again. He can make you clean, white, and pure right now today. Listen, I hope you do that. I hope you call out to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and we'd love to hear from you. Get a hold of us at jackhibbs.com, and until next time, God bless you. Welcome to Real Life Radio with Jack Hibbs. God's Word never will return void. God's Word is spirit, it's power, and it has its effect. So I want to encourage you to grab your Bibles, open them up, and get ready to learn from God's Word. God did not give us Bible prophecy to scare us, but to prepare us. But I think you're going to get a lot out of it, and one of the great reasons You are the light of the world, Jesus said. You are the salt of the earth. How does that happen? By the power of the Holy Spirit. You're going to get excited about what Jesus Christ wants to do in and through you. Jack Hibbs truly believes we are living in some of the most exciting days in history which brings some great opportunities to share with the world a powerful, no-nonsense presentation of the gospel to this generation who is searching for answers and truth. Will you stand with us in sharing this message in real and practical ways? We ask that you commit to support Real Life each month with a gift of your choosing. In return, our gift to you for becoming a Real Life partner, we'd like to send you this Worldview DVD. It's titled, What You Believe Defines You. Call now, 1-877-777-2346. That's 877-777-2346. Or by mail, P.O. Box 1273, Chino Hills, California, 91709. Or simply go to reallifewithjackhibbs.org. Your gift will be faithfully put to work because it's our desire that through Jesus Christ, you will know real life.